How's it going everybody? Chaotic Meatball here and welcome back to my fifth Fire Red and Leaf Green Legendary Speedrun. And today we're finishing the last of the Hoenn Weather Trio with Kyogre. And holy moly is this thing strong. And we start out with Water Pulse and Scary Face, some decent moves for the beginning of the game, though Scary Face isn't really needed when Kyogre has a base 90 speed. Aside from that, Kyogre has a bunch of nutty moves for me to take advantage of, such as Surf, Ancient Power, Body Slam, Calm Mind, Ice Beam by Level Up, and Hydro Pump, meaning we don't even have to go out of our way to get a TM for Ice Beam, which gives us plenty of money to get Thunderbolt, but that's even at that point, I can use Shockwave before I get that TM, so we have a lot to work with. And besides that, you remember what I said about Kyogre's base 90 speed? Yeah, it's tied with its base 90 defense as its lowest stat. Base 100 HP in attack, base 140 special defense, and a whopping base 150 special attack is what I'm going to be working with today. And with the help of Calm Mind, Kyogre's weaknesses of electric and grass are really not going to be hurting nearly at all. But enough rambling, let's get into the run. So, of course, I replace Squirtle with Kyogre. Makes my life easy when I just replace the same type of Pokemon. But even then, eventually Bulbasaur is going to be blasted as an Ivysaur and Venusaur with Ice Beam. But for now, I only have Water Pulse, and thanks to Drizzle, it's a two-shot, even though it's not very effective. Seeing that actually made me realize, wow, I just need to skip every battle I can. So I did. Only fighting a few wild Pokemon and Bugcatcher Sammy before making it into Pewter City at a measly level 7. No worries though, since I just went into the gym, skipping the Junior Trainer, and went straight for Brock. I figured with the Water Pulse that I started with, it really shouldn't be a problem. And lo and behold, I one-shot both Geodude and Onyx with Water Pulse, getting Kyogre up to level 9 before getting the Boulder Badge. Heck, even the Rock Tomb TM is learnable by Kyogre, since even though I get Ancient Power at level 15, I'll at least have an additional move instead of having to rely on 20 Power Points of Water Pulse before I have to heal again. But why am I not surprised that as soon as I try to use Rock Tomb, I miss it twice in a row before trying to land it on a weak Caterpie? I'm just trying to conserve Power Points over here, please don't punish me. And fortunately, the game didn't want to punish me much. So, I was able to get Spearow within three encounters and in a single Pokeball for the trade later on. So, I didn't waste too much time, and would you look at that? I even remembered to grab Repels before making it to Mount Moon. What a great day this is! I still hit a Spinner Rocket Grunt before the two required trainers of the area, but that's not that much of a big deal, it's not that much of a time waster. I just gained an extra level before fighting the required Rocket and Scientist, grabbing the Dome Fossil since I will not dignify grabbing the other one, and emerged on the other side. Unfortunately though, Kyogre can't get Mega Punch or Mega Kick over on Route 4. But look at the bright side, at least I don't have to rely on crappy low accuracy moves compared to Water Pulse. So as I arrived in Cerulean City, the biggest negative that I had realized was that Kyogre is far and away too low a level to fight Misty at this point. Level 14 is no match for her. However, I think it'll be good enough to face off against the rival. This did take a few attempts though, mostly thanks to Bulbasaur just attempting to stall me out with Sleep Powder and either using Leech Seed or Vine Whip to take me down, but a few attempts later I did manage to take him down relatively easily. Despite Sand Attack being a thing, I was able to KO Pidgeotto with two Water Pulses, taking no damage before Bulbasaur came out. I managed to also get a critical with Water Pulse as he went for Vine Whip, which was great because that means he's not stalling and it allowed me to go ahead and KO next turn with another Water Pulse, leading to Abra. Here's where Sand Attack kicked in though, as I missed with Water Pulse twice as it pointlessly went for Teleport, but I KO'd it on the third one, leaving just Rattata. He goes for Quick Attack, and Water Pulse is a one-shot, winning me the fight at level 15. Pretty low level at the moment, but I'm sure I'll be able to reach a relatively equal level to Misty through routes 24 and 25. And sure enough, by the time I got to build, Kyogre reached level 20, a near-perfect level to take down our next gym leader, thanks to picking up a new normal-type move in Body Slam. First try is a success, as Staryu is a one-shot with our newly learned Body Slam, and Starmie is a five-shot after a few Swifts, a Super Potion, one more Swift, and a Water Pulse. Not too bad at all. I didn't expect her to actually survive that long with Starmie, I thought that Body Slam would at least do half but I still survived, so I can't say that that was a problem. 
Afterwards, I made sure to just head south and grab the rare candy and citrus berry on Route 6. I've been actually making sure to keep a list of rare candies to grab in these runs now, as there's have been a few that I've actually missed in these runs, such as the one on Cycling Road, one on Route 9, and one on Route 13. However, I don't think I'll be grabbing Route 13's rare candy since it's a little too far out of the way and not made up for time, so... But that's the side of the point. It's time for the in-game trade for Farfetch'd, the Bike Voucher, and Rival 3. Over on the SSN, he's really not too much more difficult as the second rival battle, as Pidgeotto was a two-shot with Ancient Power, and Ivysaur was a two-shot with Body Slam, missing Sleep Powder. Awesome! Well, with the hardest Pokémon out of the way, I used Water Pulse to take out Raticate, leaving just Kadabra. Unfortunately, I tried using Water Pulse again, and it was disabled, so I wasted my turn, and I missed a bit thanks to Pidgeotto getting off a Sand Attack earlier in the battle. But Kadabra does go down to a Body Slam, winning me the fight and allowing me to grab Cut. Not bad at all, so let's go grab the Thunder Badge. I hate this puzzle. You, fight me! Lieutenant Surge starts with Voltorb, a one-shot with Water Pulse, as is Pikachu, leaving just Raichu to do the same after a critical, after getting off a double team, getting Kyogre to level 24, and giving me the TM for Shockwave. This will be very useful, especially since it can't miss, so I immediately replaced Rock Tomb with Shockwave, then moved over to Route 9 to get my way towards Lavender Town. There's nothing really crazy throughout this stretch of routes and caves, aside from the lone hidden rare candy on Route 9, adding to the collection yet again. But by the time I'm in Celadon, Kyogre's only level 29, six levels away from learning Ice Beam. I figured I'm gonna really want that for the fight against Erika, so I went straight for the game corner rocket hideout, getting Kyogre to level 31 before fighting Giovanni. A simple four water pulses to win, of course, one-shotting both Rhyhorn and Onyx before two-shotting Kangaskhan, only getting hit with a single Mega Punch before winning. It got me to level 32, so I went ahead and fought the last two trainers blocking the exit of the hideout to get just shy of level 33. Still not there yet though, so I grabbed Fly just to the west of Celadon and headed into the Pokemon Tower over in Lavender Town, meaning it's already time for the Rival 4 fight. Since I still don't have Ice Beam, I still don't have an easy out to Ivysaur, but that's not too big of a deal. He leads with Pidgeotto, going down to a single Shockwave, leading to Ivysaur, who goes down to a critical Body Slam. Not bad. Leading to Gyarados, who is also a one-shot with Shockwave, Relith goes down to Water Pulse, and Kadabra with Body Slam. Now that's what I call a versatile sweeper. There's also a rare candy here in the Pokemon Tower right before the Ghost Marowak that I'm sure will be useful in the League Battles, but I decided to actually fight a few of the optional trainers here since I wanted to make sure I hit level 35 before exiting. And sure enough, on the second rocket grunt on the top before rescuing Mr. Fuji, I managed to get there, learning Ice Beam over Body Slam, since now Calm Mind assists with all three of my moves. Plus, I was just using Body Slam for grass types anyway. With the Poke Flute in hand though, I headed back to Celadon, grabbing the free power point up, and went into the gym. I figured fighting the trainers would be a waste of time, so I fought two of the required ones to make it to Erika herself with plenty of power points for Ice Beam to spare. She leads with Victory Bell, a single Ice Beam taking it down, as it does with her Tangela, and her Vile Plume as well. I knew that move would make the fight trivial, and here we are, better off for it. With half of the badges in my possession, I figured that Sylph Company would be the next wisest choice to go to, since they haven't yet opened up Saffron City, so it gets rid of two birds with one stone. Plus, I hadn't yet grabbed the bike itself yet, despite having the voucher, so going here first was probably wise. This of course led me to Rival 5, and I got destroyed thanks to Venusaur, but that was without Calm Mind, so I just set two of them up on Pidgeot, as he attacked with two wing attacks, then just swept his team. Ice Beam on Pidgeot and Venusaur, Shock Wave on Gyarados, Water Pulse on Growlithe, and Ice Beam on Alakazam to round off the battle. That's basically the strat right there. If I can't win without Calm Mind, just spam Calm Mind on the most convenient Pokemon to win. And sure enough, that managed to be the winning move here. But I'm not out of the woods yet, since Giovanni is straight after Rival 5. I'm about on par for his levels here, so I figured going in without Calm Minds first was the strategy. Giovanni started with Nidorino, and Water Pulse isn't quite a one-shot, just barely missing it, so he goes for Fairy Attack, missing and going down to a second Water Pulse. Nidoqueen is the same, not quite a one-shot, but it lands Tail Whip. No need to worry, as I take it down with a second Water Pulse, leading to Kangaskhan. 
I used Ice Beam, but then it also used Tail Whip, allowing me to follow up with Water Pulse to KO, leaving just Rhyhorn to go down to the same Water Pulse, winning me the fight with no worries whatsoever. Jeez, man, come on, why no attacks? I don't mind, but I also do want to entertain the audience just slightly. I mean, they watch the same video game over and over again, they gotta have some variation. You can't just suck every time. Oh well. Maybe I'll just go back to the Kaizo games to get an actual challenge. Getting back to the battles themselves, though, I went straight for Sabrina afterwards. Since the gym is open, I may as well go for her, since I still haven't gone down to Fuchsia City yet. She leads with Kadabra, so I went for a single Calm Mind as she did, then followed up with Water Pulse to one-shot Kadabra, Mr. Mime, Venomoth, and Alakazam, who managed to outspeed and land a weak Psychic, finishing the fight in super short order. I flew back to Celadon, then realized I didn't have the bike, so I flew back to Cerulean, grabbed it, then flew back to Celadon, finally arriving on the cycling road. I'm past level 40 at this point, so I should be completely fine for Koga, so I grabbed the hidden power point up and max elixir while also going up the road to grab the hidden rare candy, since it's really not that much of a time loss to go for it. I was thinking of going for Koga first, but why would I do that when clearly the smartest way of handling this situation is heading into the Safari Zone to grab both the Gold Teeth and the HM for Surf? That gives me a bonus 30 power, so I don't have to use Calm Mind nearly as much as I would if I was still using Water Pulse. With that, it's gym time though, and honestly I had no idea there was a shorter path towards Koga until the day I was looking up optimizations to beat this game. And sure enough, that was in the speedrun and I said to myself, how did you manage to miss this for so long? And so here we are, integrating it into the run, and I made sure to skip the trainers that didn't need to be fought, saving time and getting me to Koga. I made sure to give Kyogre a Pecha Berry, then set up two Calm Mines, and just swept this whole team with Surf, taking out Coughing, Muck, Coughing number two, and Wheezing with one Surf apiece, winning the match in very sacky fashion. At this point, I'm just bored, so I wanted to fly through the rest of the game, so I went straight to the fly menu, getting over to Pallet Town to go south to Cinnabar Island. Pokemon Mansion isn't anything I'm worried about, but I did remember two important details. A hidden rare candy at the cost of a single optional trainer, nothing much to deal with there, and avoiding the optional trainer in the basement of the area. My last few clears of the game had me going down the middle of the hallway here, getting me into this completely useless battle on the basement floor, so I remembered this time and got out without having to fight that guy, moving on to the gym afterwards. I cleared out all of the trainers before facing off against Blaine, and that was probably a good decision, though I'm not sure if the quiz machines would actually be faster. I'd have to check the speedrun again, I don't remember. But that's beside the point. Blaine starts out with Growlithe, and it is a one-shot with Surf. Then I use two Calm Minds and Ponyta, predicting a bounce, and sure enough, that's what he goes for. Unfortunately, I don't even have to deal with Paralysis, KOing with a single Surf and leading to Rapidash. I outsped and nailed a Surf, leaving just Arcanine, which plus two special attack with a base 150 stat already is plenty enough to KO Arcanine in one shot, leaving just one more badge to earn. Giovanni's Gym is no struggle at all, to be completely honest. Two required trainers plus a ground type gym leader isn't exactly going to be a problem for a water type legendary. Let's be real here. But how well did he actually do against me in battle? That is the question I'm asking here. Well, I'm sure you already know, but let's talk about it anyway since I've got some spare time on my hands before we go to the league. He leads with Rhyhorn, of course, a one shot with Surf. Doug Trio is also a one shot, leading to Nitto Queen, who's also a one shot, so is Nitto King, and so is Rhyhorn number two, so much for that. I'm sure it would have also been a one shot if he actually had Rhydons instead of Rhyhorns at this point of the game, but hey, we can't always get what we want, and what I want is a more difficult battle. Maybe Rival 6 can assist in this case. Well, he doesn't help that much, since all I do is set up two Calm Mines, then Ice Beam is Pidgeot and Venusaur. Surf is Rhyhorn, Shockwave is Gyarados, Surf is Growlithe, then actually have a bit in back and forth with Alakazam, as it disables Surf, so I go for Ice Beam, but then it goes for Calm Mind, allowing it to survive. Disable goes away, so he uses it again, disabling Ice Beam, but I do use the Big Brain play, switching over to Shockwave to pick up the KO and the win. Not bad, at least you put up more of a fight with your last Pokemon in comparison to Giovanni. But that's the thing, you put up a small amount of fight. I need 
more fight. I need the power flowing through me as I surge through tough opponents. Opponents that will make me squirm and wonder if I'll be able to beat them on the first try with the legendary at my disposal. Well, after grabbing the last rare candy of the run in Victory Road and dealing with some strength puzzles, it's time to put Kyogre to the test. But let's see just how far this big ol' fish can go in the big leagues. So I ended Victory Road at a solid level 50, but I didn't use the rare candies immediately. I wanted to give myself a bit more of a challenge, though I did stop over in Celadon City to finish off my few remaining items I needed for the challenge. I made sure to grab the Mystic Water, which I can get for a thousand coins at the game corner, as well as the TM for Thunderbolt, which I can get for 4,000 coins, and replaced Shockwave. I'm really satisfied with this moveset. An electric move, a water move, and an ice move all wrapped together nicely with Calm Mind? Yeah, this is going to be a slaughterhouse. So I started with Lorelei, going in with two Calm Minds as Dugong set up both Hail and Surf before I used Thunderbolt, KOing Dugong, Cloyster, and Slowbro before Jinx came out, and survived a Thunderbolt, putting Kyogre to sleep before I was able to get off the Surf after taking a few ice punches. But then, of course, I misclicked and hit Surf on instead of Thunderbolt on Lapras, allowing it to confuse my Kyogre, and of course, it decided to hit itself over and over again instead of landing a single Thunderbolt to win. So I decided to reset. Then I also realized, hey, I forgot to deposit my HM slaves into the box before heading in last time. Let me do that. So I did, going in again at level 50. This time, I again went for two Calm Minds and took down the first three Pokemon in the same way I did in the first battle with Thunderbolt. But then I went for Surf on Jinx, one-shotting it this time and leaving just Lapras. Of course, this time I didn't misclick, going for Thunderbolt and one-shotting and winning the battle. Alright, sweet. Let's see if Bruno can go the same way. Well, the first time wasn't too good since Onyx did a bit too much damage, so I just reset and tried again. Instead of setting up on Onyx, I went for Surf on it, and then just went for Surf again on Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee to one-shot all three of them, no setup required, leading to Machamp. I hit Surf as he only hit a scary face and cross chop for half of Kyogre's HP before I finished it off with another Surf, luckily not getting him into healing range thanks to his Citrus Berry and leaving just the second Onyx to go down to a Surf. I'm surprised I didn't even need Calm Mind for this fight. But this is when I figured I'd use my rare candies since I had just leveled up, getting Kyogre up to level 62 before challenging Agatha. She wasn't bad, as I set up a Calm Mind on Gengar number 1 as she hit a Toxic, but I figured I could just surf everything in the battle and win on the timer. But sadly, Kyogre did not outspeed Gengar number 2, so it hit me with a Sludge Bomb and made that dream come to an end. So I just swapped my Mystic Water for a Lumberry to make up for it, then went into attempt number two. She led with Gengar, so I went for a single Calm Mind before she went for Double Team, so I figured this would be a good time to go for Surf so I didn't miss a whole bunch, taking it out and leading to Golbat. In replacement for my Mystic Water, I set up a second Calm Mind as she hits Poison Fang, doing barely any damage as I used Thunderbolt, taking it down and leading Arbok. It didn't get a single thing off as I hit a massive Surf, having Gengar number two fall to the same fate after hitting a weak Sludge Bomb, as did Haunter, both with Surf to win the battle. This just leaves Lance in the champion, so I restored Kyogre's power points outside of battle and gave it back the Mystic Water before going into the penultimate battle. Gyarados is an easy one-shot with Thunderbolt. Both Dragonairs go down to Ice Beam, leading to Dragonite. I was worried this thing wasn't going to be a one-shot, but I don't know why. I'm overleveled. I'm hitting for a times 4 weakness. I have a base 150 special attack, it's going to go down to a single Ice Beam, leaving just Aerodactyl to hit an Ancient Power, but with no follow-up plan, I was easily able to hit Surf for the KO and the victory. Jeez, that was underwhelming. Let's see if the champion can provide us with a fun battle. He leads with Pidgeot, of course, again, who thankfully only goes for Aerial Ace as I use Calm Mind once, KOing with Thunderbolt as Venusaur comes out and eats an Ice Beam and goes down. Not bad for one Calm Mind. Third out is Alakazam, who hits a Psychic that did about a fourth of Kyogre's HP before going down to a Surf, leading to Rhydon. It's an easy 4 times weakness to take advantage of, falling to Surf and leading to Gyarados, something that I can also take advantage of a 4 times weakness for in Thunderbolt, leaving just Arcanine. He attempts to hit an extreme speed to make up the distance in the fight, but it barely does anything, 
letting Kyogre hit one last surf, ending the fight, and ending the run with a time of 3 hours and 17 minutes. That isn't too bad. Kyogre did better than Groudon, which was kind of expected, but not nearly as well as Rayquaza. I'm not surprised since water types tend to run through Kanto extremely easily, especially if they have very good type coverage as Kyogre does, since if we recall back to our Chinjo run, Chinjo essentially had the same moveset in Surf, Ice Beam, and Thunderbolt, so the only advantage we had here was that it was a legendary instead of an unevolved Pokemon and Calm Mind, so of course we were going to be able to do it faster. But Having an advantage over 4 out of the 8 gym leaders in Brock, Erica if you have Ice Beam, since you can also get the Ice Beam TM in Celadon City itself, Blaine, and Giovanni, so it's really not a surprise. Good to see Kyogre in second place though, but I really want to see if I can get one of these runs to get below 3 hours. I have a feeling I can get it with something like Mewtwo or perhaps Lugia or Ho-Oh, but we'll have to see. The next two legendaries are going to be very fun though, as Latios and Latios are going to be coming up next. They don't have that much different from each other, but I'm wondering what small differences they provide that will perhaps make one pull ahead of the other, but make sure to tune in next time to find out. Thank you guys so much for watching the video, without your continued support this channel would not be successful. If you'd like to help support the channel in any way that you can, you can check out my Patreon in the link description which I have gotten to revamp yet for 2021, but I will be trying to get to it either this weekend or next. So, that's that. Uh, if you want to, you can also become a YouTube channel member, or even become a subscriber over on Twitch. But if you'd like to support for free, liking, commenting, subscribing, and ringing the notification bell helps me out probably more than those other things. And if you're interested in seeing me do challenges like this live, you can follow me at twitch.tv slash chaoticmeatballtv. Link will be in the bleh. Link will be in the description. I can't speak when I'm trying to go off the cuff. That's all for now though, so stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you guys next time.